We have all seen beautiful brick walls, but how often do we notice how they are made? If you take a closer look at these walls, you will see that in between the bricks lies a whitish paste. This paste is called a mortar and it serves a very specific purpose. Mortar is used to bind bricks, to fill and seal irregular gaps, and even to add a decorative color and pattern. Mortar is not only used in between bricks, but in between all kinds of building blocks, such as stones and concrete masonry units. Mortar is not as strong as cement and is never used as a sole building material. Instead, it is the glue that holds building blocks together. It is less expensive and easier to repair than the building blocks, so it also serves to make masonry repairs easier. Mortar is generally composed of sand, a binder, and water. The most common binder since the early 20th century is Portland cement. This is a fine powder made by heating limestone and clay minerals to form a hardened material called clinker, which is then ground with gypsum. However, mineral lime, which has been used since ancient times, is also still used. You can find mortar in bags in a dry pre-mixed form. You then combine it with water to activate it. It hardens or cures in the spot where you lay it. There are many different types of mortars, and it is crucial that you use the right one for the right application. If not, you can end up with mortars that are too hard for some types of masonry and can crack. The word mortar comes from the Latin mortarium, which means crushed. But how did mortar come to be? Let's take a look at the history of this impressive multi-purpose material. It all began in Babylonian times. During those days, the very first mortars were made of mud and clay. Babylonian constructions used baked bricks and lime, or pitch mortars. According to archaeologist Roman Gershman, the first evidence of humans using a form of mortar dates back to 6500 BCE. It was at the Mirgar of Balochistan site in the Indus Valley of Pakistan. That site was built with sun-dried bricks and mortar. The ancient sites of Harappan civilization of the 3rd millennium BCE also made use of mortar, more specifically gypsum mortar. Gypsum mortar, unlike the lime mortar used by the Babylonians, requires a lower firing temperature, making it easier to make and faster to set. This may be why it was also used in the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient constructions. Next, we go to Greece, where buildings with cement and mortar were made beginning in around 500 BCE. The underground aqueduct of Megara features a reservoir coated with pozzolanic mortar. Pozzolanic mortar, also known as hydraulic cement, is a lime-based mortar with an additive of volcanic ash. This allows it to be hardened under water. The Romans then improved upon this formula by using crushed terracotta and introducing aluminum oxide and silicone dioxide into the mix, they created a denser mortar that resisted penetration by water even better than the Greeks' version. Sadly, after this period, the art of making hydraulic mortar was lost for almost two millennia. In the Middle Ages, the Gothic cathedrals in Europe were built with a mortar whose only active ingredient was lime. This type of mortar can easily be degraded by water, and some of these structures have suffered as a result. Luckily, today's masonry professionals know exactly what mortar to use to make our structures strong and durable, and they have many options to choose from. Now you know what mortar is and how it came to be. The next time you look at a brick wall, think about the history behind these structures. You will be impressed.